Hey everybody, Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility in the mood for another rant. I got one today for you. Actually, I kind of hinted this a couple days ago. Uh, today's title of this rant is Why Ticketmaster Sucks. So I think when I originally hinted that I was going to do a rant on tick on, or do a rant in general, I was thinking about this one and it was a, specifically on one incident. But then a couple days later, I had to get tickets for something else and I had an equally puzzling experience. So I'm going to just do a rant on both of them, combine them together mix them up, shoot them out, spew them out, whatever. Hope you enjoy this. Anyway, so back a while ago, I actually did a rant on the ridiculous prices of concert tickets these days. And of course, I included Ticketmaster in that whole rant. Uh, and my opinions on how expensive concert tickets are has not changed. However, this rant is more on the method, the delivery method, or the actual, the ability to purchase and procure tickets online through Ticketmaster's website that I think sucks, all right? And I'm going to tell you why. So recently, I tried to get tickets for two shows, both really puzzling experiences. I'm going to start with the first one, which is actually the more notable. Both of these are, one is a, a you know, mega huge band who hasn't toured here in a bit, announced the tour, everybody's trying to get tickets. The other is a band, a very popular band, who's actually been around a couple times already, like this year, and are then just announced another leg of the tour for next year. So that's not as much in demand, but still my experience with getting tickets was just, just wacky and puzzling. So anyway, let's start with the first, the Rolling Stones. Now the Rolling Stones have announced they're going to do a slew of dates across North America in 2019, and I wanted to make sure I go because I haven't seen the Stones since 1989. I saw them on the Steel Wheels tour. Now, back then, in 1989, I was not much of a Stones fan at all. In fact, I really didn't like them a hell of a lot. Okay, Growing up, I just did not like the Stones. I was a metalhead, had no use for them. Uh, but I was working in Long Island at the time at a small local uh, cable company, and a bunch of guys there wanted to go see the Stones. So I said, hey, why not? I'll go. Why not, right? So I got tickets. I figured it was the time to just go hang out. It was a Chase Stadium in uh, Queens, where the Mets used to play. I figured it's a good excuse to go hang out with the guys, get drunk, you know, have a good time, whatever, which I proceeded to do. Didn't really pay much attention to the band. And uh, years later, I kind of regretted that because I, about five or eight years afterwards, I became actually a very big Rolling Stones, and I love them to this day now. So I've always wanted to go see them again in the frame of mind of, Actually, you know, when I do like the band and love the band, because back then I really could care less. Now it's so I've always been like, geez, I really want to see the Stones at least one more time because I'll appreciate it more and enjoy it more. Which back then it was just more of an excuse for a young guy to go out and get hammered with his uh, work buddies, and you know, didn't really matter who was playing. It was them in Living Color at the time. I was like, yeah, whatever. I liked Living Color, but you know, I didn't really care much for the Stones. So anyway. So they announced a show in June at uh, the old Giant Stadium, which of course now called MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. So they've got like all, if you buy, if you bought tickets before, you know that they have all these pre-sale things, right? So American Express pre-sale, Platinum, American Express pre-sale, Gold, uh, Citibank, MasterCard pre-sale, Pre-sale if you have download a couple apps, pre-sale for this, pre-sale for that. Pretty soon they're going to come up with a pre-sale for those of you who took a dump in a public restroom today or a pre-sale for, you know, whatever. I mean, they have a pre-sale for everything to the point where if you are someone who's waiting till the general public on-sale dates, which is usually on a Friday, all the pre-sale dates are, are leading up to that, you really need to rethink your method here because there's not going to be much of anything left because just about anybody can get onto any of these pre-sale dates. And if you're someone who has access to a pre-sale code, all you got to do is send it to someone else, right? It's that easy. So, but here's the catch. They don't always list all of the best and most affordable seats during these pre-sale. They want to load up on these expensive seats. That's what they want to offer you first. And then there's the matter of the scalpers. OK, because I honestly think that Ticketmaster is, is in bed with these scalpers and these third party ticket distributors, because you can't tell me that like a minute after tickets go on sale, that everything's gone. And then all of a sudden you go on StubHub and all these other ticket sites and there's all these tickets available for like double the price, double the, the ticket price. I mean, that's the reality of it. It's just such a scam. So anyway, so I get, and I don't even remember what pre-sale code I got. It was like the, the Tuesday or Wednesday, the middle of the week. Uh, it may have been Citibank. I don't know, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Okay, there's so many of them out there. So at like quarter to 10, because I go on sale at 10 a.m., right? 
At quarter to ten, I open up my browser, go on to Ticketmaster, tell it gives me the counter, right? You have 15 minutes and 39 seconds till tickets go on sale. Woo! Get all excited. So I got one computer going, my home computer going with that. I'm sitting here working as so I work from home. I'm sitting here working over here. So like at the, you know 9:59 and such and such seconds, I'm like watching, like okay, here we go. Got my mouse ready to go, and the room reopens up. Tickets are on sale, and then I get this big message saying, "You're on the waiting list." And I'm like, what waiting list? Since when is there a waiting list on Ticketmaster? i never heard of this before. What are we going back to the Ticketron days when we used to actually go have to show up at a Ticketron outlet and wait online? That's, that was the old days, right? So now I'm in a waiting list. I'm like, great, how long is this going to take? And it says you have 2,000 plus people ahead of you. 2,000 plus, that could mean anything. That could mean 10,000, 12,000. I mean, who knows, right? And they give you a status bar. They got this stupid little icon of like a monkey man uh, who's like, you know, walking across as as more more room is opening up. So I'm sitting there like, oh, geez, how long is this going to fucking take? And that guy's walking pretty damn slow. So I'm like, all right. So I'm keeping an eye on this. I'm going about my business, whatever. At 10.15, an hour and 15 minutes later, okay, that room finally opens up and it tells me, you are now... A, uh, ready and open to start shopping for tickets. So when that opens up, of course, you get the uh, the diagram of the stadium with all the seats, right? And then to the right of that, you get all the available seats that are available, and depending on your price range. So if you don't if you don't move the the price range ticker, it just gives you everything. And of course, you see all sorts of tickets there: two seventy five, three fifty, six fifty, one forty nine, sixty nine dollars, ninety nine dollars. I mean, you name it; they're all over the place, right? For all different places within MetLife Stadium. So you know the holidays are coming up. I'm not willing to spend two, three, four hundred dollars on Stones tickets. I really want to see them, but I'm so I start checking, you know, the sixty-nine dollar seats and the ninety-nine dollar seats, which are they're upper level, right? They're upper deck, but they're facing the stage. You know, you got all the the screens and everything. I'm gonna be able to see. I'm gonna be able to enjoy. It's not that big a deal for me. I just want to go. So I start clicking, and there's two of us that are going, my buddy and I. So I have to buy two tickets, not just single tickets. So every time I click on these two tickets are available in this particular section. I look at the diagram. I'm like, okay, those look good. Click on them. Would you like to purchase these? Yes. Oh, sorry. Someone else has already purchased those tickets. But here are two other seats together in a, in the similar section, in the same section or a nearby section. Would you like to look at those? Yes, sure. Click on that. Yes, I want those. Oh, sorry. And 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 this rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Every fucking ticket opportunity that I click on, I get the same thing. The same thing. So I start looking at other price ranges, right? And then before you know it, it's like all the ones that you want to buy that are in your budget that keeps telling you that someone has someone has bought them from you or someone has already purchased those. Because now, again, you have to wonder. So if you're in a line waiting to get in to buy tickets, how many people are they letting into this buying room at the same time? It's not just me, Right? It's not just one person at a time, which makes this whole thing really, really shady. My opinion is that like that waiting list that we were all on, is that like hour and 15 minutes? Who's actually buying tickets at that point? Is it the scalpers and the third-party ticket distributors? Because it's just like, you know, and then all of a sudden when the, when that room opens and they're allowing me to go purchase, it's, it's just like the old days. You go every time, everything you click on is already gone. So it's like, it's like a free-for-all. So everybody's in there at the same time. Which makes you wonder, what is this waiting line then? This waiting list. I don't get it. Okay. So I proceeded to go, all, and I, I just couldn't get anything. There was nothing within my price range I could get. Okay. And I basically gave up. Because everything that was within my price range, every time I clicked on it, told me it was already, someone just bought it. But meanwhile, they keep showing those same seats, those same tickets available for purchase. If they're no longer there, if someone has bought them, get them off that fucking list. I don't get it. I kept clicking on the same ones over and over again. They kept telling me, oh, someone just bought those. No, someone bought them 15 minutes ago. Clear, And, and you can't refresh your screen because then you lose your place in line. So it's like a no-win situation. So I gave up. So what I, what I tried to do, like an hour later, I went up to StubHub. And I started to see a lot of those tickets in those sections that I was trying to get for the lower price now available for forty, fifty dollars more, okay, they're available. You could buy them, and then there's a forty or fifty dollar StubHub surcharge on top of it. So now that like ninety nine dollar ticket is two and a quarter. 
that $69 ticket is like $185. And I'm sorry, I'm not doing it. Not doing it. So I was like, I guess I'm not going to the Stones. However, within a couple of hours, they announced that they added a second show. Okay? So I figured, I'll give this a try. I can go that day too, right? It's a Monday, who cares? Um, I had a little bit of an easier time. However, this time, instead of being put on a wait list, I was put in a wait room, okay? Of which that little guy walking, he actually walked a little bit faster this time. So I think that the uh, a room for me to order tickets opened up within 20 minutes, I think, which is a hell of a lot better than an hour and 15 minutes. I was able to get a two good seats, you know, in the $99 range, up top but facing the stage, pretty much stage center off just a bit. Um, fairly easy. Of course, then Ticketmaster adds their exorbitant fees. So before you know it, a $99 ticket is $120. Uh, and then, you know, they, of course, they, you know, you got to, how you want to get it delivered. And I'm sorry, I like to get my tickets, so I want them mailed to me. Uh, and some for some venues, you got to pay extra for that. Uh, for others, you know, they say, well, just download, you know, your and print out your ticket. I hate that shit. You know, that's, that's not a ticket. I like to keep all my stuff. So anyway, so that was the first instance. And that was a horrible experience. I was really annoyed at that. Granted, the end result was I, I was able to get two tickets to a show, not the show I wanted to go to, but the next show um, within the price range I was willing to pay. So in the end, all good. But that didn't make that trying that experience trying to get on that first day any less painful. That just, that sucked. So then let's fast forward a week. Judas Priest announces they're going to do a, another leg of the tour, uh, the Firepower Tour. This time they're bringing over Uriah Heap as openers, which, as you guys all know, I love Uriah Heap, right? And I love Priest. I already saw Priest twice on this tour this year. So I really didn't need to go again. But I love Heap. I love the new album. And I saw Heap this year also. So I was kind of like, eh, but you know what? It's such a great pairing. It's close to me. Um, I was like, I want to go. Okay, so I just, I said, I'm just going to buy a single ticket and I'm going to go. So then that's the whole pre-sale thing again, right? So I, for whatever reason, I didn't get a pre-sale code to any of this. A buddy of mine passed me on the pre-sale code, which he used, which I then tried to use and it didn't work. I don't know why. Did I not do it on the right day? I don't know. Maybe some of these pre-sale codes only work for one day. Uh, he passed me on another one that didn't work either. And then he said, oh, I found that about this other pre-sale code, but you, I think you got to download the mobile app of our local radio station, and then when you download that app, you'll get a pre presale code from them. So basically, they're giving away presale codes everywhere. So like I said, it doesn't matter you know where you go, you can get a presale code. Okay, go down to the newspaper, buy a, go down to the newsstand, buy a newspaper. They'll give you a presale code down there. Go work out at the gym. They'll give you a presale code when you check in at the front desk. I mean, there's presale codes for concerts everywhere nowadays. It's ridiculous. Nobody needs to wait till general on sale dates anymore. You just don't. So anyway, so uh, I download the mobile app for the radio station, which I'm going to delete because I don't need to be on their mobile. I don't need to have their mobile app. I don't even listen to the radio station. Uh, I got the presale code. I went on to the Ticketmaster website. I popped it in. Boom. There's all the available seats. First of all, the seats are really expensive. This is not a big venue. Priest is doing like smaller venues uh, on this second leg of this tour. And the tickets are pretty damn expensive. And again, I just bought Stones tickets, so I didn't need to spend a lot of money. I've already seen Priest twice on this tour. I've seen Heaps. So I was like, you know, so I said, I'm just going to get a balcony, uh, you know, seat. Not a big deal. Anywhere anywhere in this place, the Palace Theater in Albany, New York, anywhere you sit in the Palace Theater, you can see fairly well. So I figured I'll get, I'll get a, a, one single seat up top. I'm not going to spend a lot of money. I'll just drive up there or whatever, go see the show. And you go on the seating chart and you see all these seats available. So when I go to the palace and I'm sitting up in the balcony, I want to get a seat as close to the aisle as possible. Instead of sitting all the way in the middle of the row, if you got to get up, you know, God forbid you got to walk through all these people. It's like, ugh, can't, don't want to deal with that. So I saw center facing the stage, like two rows back uh, from the, 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 the bottom of the balcony or the beginning of the balcony. And... There were two seats taken at the beginning of the aisle, then two seats open, then everything else was taken. I said, well, I'm going to grab one of those two seats. That's a good spot. Okay. Perfect view of the stage, close to the aisle. I go to purchase it, and Ticketmaster tells me, you can't purchase that ticket and leave a single empty seat next to another taken seat. I've never heard of that nonsense before. Why can't I buy a single ticket there? Right? There's going to be single tickets sit all over the place. There's a lot of people that go to shows by themselves. I generally don't, but you know, every now and then I do. 
So basically, it was telling me I can't have that ticket unless I buy the other one. In all the years I've been buying tickets on Ticketmaster, I have never, ever seen that happen. Meanwhile, I'm looking around. There are no single tickets anywhere. So basically, that's, that makes absolutely no sense. You know, what I mean by single ticket is like a single seat amongst plenty of other seats that are, you know, taken on either side. You know, there was some rows where all the seats were open. So basically, they, they were pressuring me to go buy one of those and leave those two open for someone who needs to buy two of them. You know, fuck those people. There's plenty of other places to buy two in a row. That's the seat I want. So basically now I couldn't buy the seat that I want unless I bought both of them. So I was like, this is ridiculous. So anyway, I bought the next row back or two rows back, whatever, had a bunch of open seats. I just bought one of them. I was like, whatever. I mean, this is ridiculous. I don't have time to spend arguing with Ticketmaster online, right? Ridiculous. So I went up buying the, the tickets. They were pretty inexpensive. But then, of course, you know, cheap ticket, but almost $20 in uh, in fees and taxes and surcharges, which to this day, we still don't know what what all, what all makes up all that, right? We really don't. So again, I was annoyed because, A, this should have been a minute purchase. Instead, I'm sitting there like arguing with this website. I'm like, why, why can't I buy the ticket that I want to buy, right? You're going to try and bully me into buying something else. It's like, ugh, that's where, that's where we've gotten now. Buying tickets to a concert is now a hassle and an awful user experience. In a day where, you know, society and technology is to make everything easier for the humans, right, to do things, whether it's purchasing something, doing something, it doesn't matter. It's all technology is supposed to make things easier for you, less painless. And I'm sorry, but the Ticketmaster process of ordering tickets is anything but. In my opinion, it's painful, it's frustrating, it pisses me off, and I'm getting to the point now more and more where I probably go to less concerts. I go to, no, I, I don't probably. I definitely go to a lot less concerts than I used to. Not so much because of just this. It's more of the fact just getting to places and there are less places to go to see um, concerts. It's, it's you know, transportation. It's, it's everything. And the cost. Now you throw in a ridiculously poor user experience to try and purchase tickets. And it just makes going to live concerts uh less of an interest to me as I'm getting older and I'm getting grumpier. Um, it's, it's just, it's, it's not fun. And these two experiences were all fun. I, I can't imagine it's going to get any better. So, uh, you know, and I went through a similar experience earlier this year, buying tickets for Elton John for next year. Uh, and I, I'm still, you know, I, I have very few bands on my bucket list. I've seen so many of them in my life. Uh, but there's a few like artists that I really like that I haven't gotten to see. So Elton John is one of them. Okay, the Stones I've seen once before, but this was another bucket list to do one more time. I have never seen Billy Joel, and I want to get tickets to Billy Joel, but I've had similar experiences trying to get tickets to Billy Joel at Madison Square Garden. He plays there every month, and no matter when you try to get tickets, it's it's painful. There's Within seconds, there's nothing left except for behind the stage and poor viewing seats, and they're ridiculously expensive. Billy Joel has been playing the Garden every month for how many years now? What are these same people who live in New York City going to these shows over and over and over and over and over again every month? How about some of us poor schmucks who live outside of the city who would like to go at least once? Or is it just all these scalpers buying up everything constantly and reselling for double the price? I don't know. But I'm getting to the point where I'm not going to do it much longer. Okay? You're going to lose me as a customer. And I'm just going to stop going. Because I've basically seen everybody I've wanted to see multiple times over. And that's why I'm going to less and less. And I'm figuring out better things to do with my time and my money. So... That's my rant for today, guys. Visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're on the mighty YouTube. Got lots more top 10 shows coming up. Got one on Boston coming up later today, probably tonight. Uh, I've also got uh, a bunch more of those. Uh, hopefully, get the Judas Priest history of show done next week. Didn't happen this week. Um, history of Grand Funk Railroad's coming up. A lot of deep cuts on classic albums coming up. So we got a lot more to do before the year is up. So stay tuned. We'll see you soon. Bye.